Well, howdy folks. I've decided to do a video on uh, what to get if you're just starting out in astrophotography or astronomy. If you are doing that, I would highly recommend going to astrobackyard.com, uh, Trevor Jones's website, and he's got a YouTube channel and it's absolutely fabulous. It has a whole bunch of tutorials and uh, his suggestions on what to get. I'm doing one because I've been asked recently by a number of people their, what my thoughts are in getting telescopes and cameras and whatnot. So I figured, well, I'll, I'll do one on what not to do. <laughs> I spent lots of money on things I probably didn't need to get or buying the wrong stuff. So I'll start off with uh, this part one video on the camera. So I first started out looking at the moon. I said, oh boy, it looks really beautiful. And so I got my little cell phone. This is back in 2009. And I took a quick picture of the moon with my cell phone, and it looked like heck, you know. <laughs> it, was, it was terrible. My wife said, oh, that looks pretty good for the cell phone. And I said, but it wasn't good. And she said, well, you really need to get a DSLR. I said, oh, cool. So I got my excuse to get a DSLR. So I did a little bit of research. Uh, there was an Astro Backyard back then, so I did what I could. And I decided between a Nikon or a uh, Canon, I narrowed it down, and then I decided to go with the... Nikon D3000 and it was a good camera I got really good pictures of the moon with it uh, with the standard uh, 55 millimeter uh, lens the 18 to 55 millimeter lens but I wanted more so about six or seven months later I decided to get this uh, uh, 70 by 300 millimeter uh, zoom lens and it took really good pictures of the moon. This was really good. Uh, it, it worked out well, and I was happy I got it. However, this probably wasn't the best purchase for astrophotography in general. And the reason is, is back in 2009, when I was interested in it, I didn't do my due diligence for astrophotography and what I mean is this is this camera this entry-level camera did not have a live view and for astrophotography you really need live view it's gonna make your life a lot easier nowadays any entry-level DSLR that you get is gonna have live view on it. I can't think of one that does not right now whether it's Canon Nikon, Sony, any of these, any of those people, Pentax, well, you name it, they, they've all got live view these days. So get one with live view and uh, you'll do yourself a favor. Okay, well, for after hemming and hawing with the uh, DSLR for a couple of years, I got some telescopes, a couple of telescopes and some mounts, and then I was ready to do some more with astrophotography, but I knew I needed something different than the than that Nikon, so I decided to get an astrophotography camera, dedicated astrophotography camera. So I decided on the uh, Orion uh, Starshoot G3 Deep Sky Imaging Camera. It's a color camera, and I don't even own it anymore, but here's what it looks like. So I there you go. There was it. It was about $350. I would not recommend doing that. I was really not too experienced with the DSLR yet, and there was a lot to operating a dedicated camera, especially because it's monochrome uh, in addition, because you have to get some filters and all sorts of whatnot. You need specialized software in order to run it, and this... you. This was only good for doing deep sky nebula and stuff like that, which I wasn't really, I didn't really understand it at the time. If you really want a good um, understanding of the camera sensor size and pixels and all that, I would also recommend another website, uh, YouTube channel, uh, Dylan O'Donnell. He's got a really good video on cameras as well, uh, which I highly recommend going to. Anyways, this wasn't a total loss, however. Uh, I was able to use this camera for my auto guider, and I used this as my auto guider for a couple of years uh, when I got my next camera. All right, so I managed to get the last DSLR that doesn't have live view. I then bought a 
astrophotography camera in 2013, and I got a telescope and mount uh, by then and I started realizing you know I got I, I need a camera and I needed a, a DSLR so I went I went back and got a DSLR but this time I did some more research what helped was that I bought a, a book uh, an online book actually my wife bought it for me for a present it was Jerry Lovergross's uh, DSLR book he's got a number of online books and he he's the authority on DSLR astrophotography he's been doing it for even before there were DSLRs, he was doing it with uh, film cameras, so he, he knows a lot. And uh, I'd recommend uh, his, one of his books as well for a resource. Anyways, I zeroed in on the Canon T3i at this point. They had uh, newer versions, but I wanted the, this one is a tried and true, and it's the workhorse, or back then it was a workhorse uh, DSLR. So I got this in 2000, what was that, 2015? Yeah, 2015 I purchased this. And uh, it, was a, it was a godsend. One of the other things that this camera has on it, in addition to live view, is it also has a swivel head uh, a view screen, which is, uh, really comes in handy for doing astrophotography. So anyways, I, I highly recommend this camera or something, the, the latest version of this. Okay, what are some other things I did with this camera? Well, I sent it to Hap Griffin at Image Infinity to get it modified, and that's where you take off the original white balance filter and get it replaced with a clear filter, and it lets in more light, in particular uh, HA light, hydrogen alpha light. Another thing is with this camera, this T3i, I was able to get an infrarometer, which will control the uh, shutter speed and all that. My Nikon, it didn't have one that was wired in. It had one where you can get a remote, uh, remote controlled one, but it sometimes worked and sometimes didn't. So that was another problem with that Nikon. I then purchased some lenses, extra lenses, a replacement for this. And the first one I bought, it was a uh, 28 millimeter uh, short lens. I don't even own that one anymore. I sold it on eBay. It was okay, but uh, what I should have bought in the first place was this Nifty 50, the 50 millimeter Canon lens. It's really inexpensive, and you can get great shots with it, and it's uh, f1.8, which means it's uh, really fast. So I would highly recommend this Nifty 50. It's cheap as all heck. Then I purchased a wider field view uh, lens, and I got a fisheye lens, the Opteca 6.5 millimeter fisheye lens for doing big Milky Way shots. And my most recent lens was this thing. This is a 200 millimeter fixed lens. It's the one that it's for Canon. I actually got it used at uh, B and H uh, Photo. I don't live too far from New York City, so I wandered in there one day and they had a used one. It was It's in great shape. And the beauty of this thing is it's uh, f2.8, so this is also a very fast lens and it's really good for astrophotography. So anyways, uh, that's it for these DSLR cameras and my other, lens, uh, other cameras I'll go into in a second. Okay, what I forgot to mention uh, was I did buy another camera in between the um, getting the other lenses for the Canon and after I got the Canon. What I needed to do is get a this little thing, and this is the QHY's um, 5L uh, IIM monochrome planetary camera and auto guider. So I got this for auto guiding, and this has been pretty good. I've been it's a really light, and I've had it for years, and this thing works really, really well. You can use it for imaging planets, of course, and as well as um, small, or I'm not small, but really bright um, globular clusters, although I haven't done any imaging with this thing. I just use it strictly for auto guiding. Okay, well that leads me to my last camera, my most recent camera that I purchased, and this is the ZWO ASI 1600 uh, Pro, Monochrome Pro, and this has been a fabulous camera. I love it. I can't say enough good things about it. 
I, I did have one problem, however, about a couple months after I bought it, the fan sort of uh, stopped working. And I don't know if what happened to it. It could have been a bug in there. Who knows? But I sent it back to ZWO, and they fixed it. And it was back. I was expecting it to be gone like uh, months, and it was only gone for like three weeks at the best. Uh, but I sent it to the uh, people I bought it from, which was, uh, was it OPT. Uh, yeah, OPT. So um, it was that. But other than that, it's been working great, and I, I love this camera. As I said, I would highly recommend not getting an astrophotography camera like this until after you've gotten a DSLR and you've been really good at using a DSLR and you feel comfortable about it because these are these dedicated astrophotography cameras there's a lot to them so anyways uh, I hope you got some use out of it uh, don't follow exactly in my footsteps because as, <laughs> as I said I, I purchased a couple cameras along the way that I probably should have done more more work with and I, I could have saved some money uh, th uh, that way and anyways we'll see you later